All right, hello, I'm uh, Kyle Francis, uh, camera instructor here at Seneca College, and I am sitting with my longtime friend and fellow classmate, we graduated at the same time, yes. O'Brien Nickel. It's wonderful to have you in here, Obi. Thank you so much for coming out. Great to be here. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> today our focus has kind of been on uh, unions a little bit. We we just spoke with Mike, uh, who is of course uh, IATSE, uh -huh. uh, and you are in NABET. Yes. Um, now you had a bit of a non-traditional path to the union, uh -huh. um, so I'd like you to just sort of give us the the Coles notes of that story. So. You're, t it's 10 years ago, you've just graduated out of the program at Seneca, what's young Obi up to? Well, at the time when I graduated, uh, I know a lot of our friends also did graduate as well, but a lot of them did not come out uh, with anything in particular, uh, job-wise. Uh, at the time, I think it was around 2007, 2008, we were in a pretty really bad depression, uh, <laughs> recession rather. <laughs> yeah, well, debatable. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the city was not doing so well where the film world was concerned. So uh, a lot of the films had uh, packed up and went back to LA. And, you know, it was really slim pickings. The work was not there. And uh, so basically what we ended up doing was, uh, well, for me anyway, um, I said, look, I have to find a job. Like, you know, <laughs> Money was tight, you know. Gotta you got pay off those student bills, you know, right? Pay the bills, and you know you're driving a car, so it's like you got insurance and gas to pay for. So I said, okay, you know, uh, I decided to apply for uh, a rental car position uh, as a customer service rep at Enterprise, and uh, I did that for about three years. And after the uh, third year, I realized that I was kind of getting tired of the every day you know sitting behind the desk typing away gaining weight and it was just not looking pretty so <laughs> I decided that um, I wanted a change of atmosphere so uh, it just so happened that I came in contact with a uh, young lady that was an actress on a show and we got to talking and she said uh, asked me if I wanted to go out on a show and uh, get involved and you know the thought came to me i said you know what maybe this is my opportunity to try to branch back into the, the film and tv world uh she had just come off the show called the kink in my hair so i was really kind of excited and interested in really doing this project so i said okay you know give me a call let me know when you're starting your project she was actually um, a resident at the cfc so she was uh, doing her program there and so she brought me on and as a PA and basically what I was doing was just basically everyday PA stuff so from schlepping stuff around on set uh, driving people from here to there and um, just doing various uh, carrying gear carrying delivering gear. people delivering coffee etc exactly. etc cetera, et cetera, whatever you had to do exactly yeah. so we we're just you know doing the normal stuff that you know as a as a beginning PA would do mm -hmm. you know that's what I was doing on set and uh, from there it just kind of I decided that if I was going to do this full time, I was going to do it to the best of my ability. And I just stayed the course and realized that if I wanted it, I, I wanted it so bad that I decided to, I said to myself that, okay, I have to work hard. And um, basically what I did was everything that I did, I put 100% into it. So even if it was, you know, setting up the lunchroom, or you know, setting up the tent for the uh, the camera, yeah. craft know, services, craft location services, services, locations. Like they had me in locations too, and I would just do everything possible at the hundred percent level, so that people would notice it and notice me. And at the end of the day, it ended up working out really good for me because um, from there, uh, it tra my name started to travel, and because I, like, um, for a lot of people. Uh, like you said, my full name on camera, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Obi, right, O'Brien. But um, nobody you know, knows that though, right? That's like. <laughs> well, for uh, for all intents and purposes, like my film name, they call me Obi. Um, of course. So it always it transferred as Obi Wan and Obi Wan <laughs> Kenobi and all this stuff. So it it became a household name within the CFC. So I started getting notoriety so through that. So you're telling these guys they all need a fun nickname. It's, it does help. It, it does, does help, help, right? It does I mean, help. Something it's, to be those memorable personal connections. By. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Now, I just want to back up real quick because you sort of, you sort of, you sort of skipped a step there on me, 
right? You you were working at Enterprise, right, mm -hmm. uh, out of graduation, and then you got transferred. Yes. So you went from. So I was just basically I was a suit and tie guy at uh, one branch, uh, basically just in and out of the the office, helping people into cars and writing tickets for their cars. Rental cars rental to businessmen. Yeah, yeah, out of the airport business, and you know Bay Street, you know type guys, and uh, I really got tired of it and. Um, I got a call from another branch that was looking for another uh, a CSR, which that was my uh, position, and they were asking me. It was a film branch, and they said, uh, "Would you be interested?" And I jumped at the opportunity because I was like, "Okay, this is great. Like, this will put me in touch with um, foot back in the door." You know, a little bit. So, so, so when thing, you say so. film branch, just to clarify, like. Yeah. The, you, you moved from just a regular old enterprise to an enterprise that dealt exclusively with yeah. the film industry. So we, it, Renting, we basically we rent cars and, to, or cars and uh, production vehicles to the production staff, uh, actors, actresses, um, transport guys if they had special cars that they wanted, so picture cars. Uh, we had availability to do that, to get those things, um, you know, cube trucks, vans, everything. Right. Uh, basically and, anything they needed. And, and that sort of, you know, you connected with this actress turned producer. Right. Who then brought you out and... And then... And, and, then, and then you became Obi-Wan yes. and everybody knows you. <laughs> this is great. Okay, so then, um, now you also had a little bit of a, uh, an interesting... You you sort of you sort of got into the union in almost a sneaky way too, right? Because yeah. You, so tell us a little bit about that. So uh, my way is the a little unorthodox. Like it's um, they don't re they frown upon it now because it's like <laughs> it's not the right way you're supposed to get into it. But um, uh, basically, uh, I had gained a lot of contacts from. Uh, being an enterprise at the film division, especially with transport. Mm -hmm. And uh, the transport guys were really friendly with me. They were very knowledgeable. They had uh, a lot of uh, insight into information uh, that helped me along the ways of getting in contact with people. And uh, so when I decided to apply for the union, um, I had actually gotten, usually you're supposed to get uh, two individuals from the department that you want to be in. Um, I, at the time when I joined, I did not have a particular um, category that I wanted to be in. I did not know what I exactly. Just, I just, just name it. I just wanted it. to get in because Whether everybody was... was saying, "Get into the union, go figure it out." And I was like, mm -hmm. "Okay, cool," you know. And uh, so basically, because I didn't have that direct um, category that I wanted, I just got two guys that I know in the union that were transport just to sign off on my application. And uh, it just happened that God just made it work out that, you know, he's like, okay, sure, yeah. And they gave me um, two categories just like that, whereas sometimes you only get one. Um, so I was very lucky. Um, I was just getting shined upon, you know, it was just crazy. So what were you two? You were, uh... So I had uh, a set dresser mm -hmm. as my first category, and uh, my second category is props assistant. Okay. And then you've worked on, give us a list, of just a brief uh, resume. So brief resume, I've worked on uh, Rookie Blue, uh, Saving Hope, uh, Orphan Black, uh, Degrassi I've actually worked on as well, LA Confidential uh, with the young kids. Um, also I've done a, uh, a new show that's coming out called The Lead. Uh, Are you allowed to talk about it? Like, yeah, I can talk about it now. That so NBA? It's, 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 a, it's a show with um, it's a female cop cast. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be airing actually sometime soon. Uh, it's, it, I think it's going to be pretty good. It's based off of a show that is um, shooting out in, uh, I think it's out in England. Yeah. And uh, so that should be airing uh, relatively soon. So look out, look out for that. Cool. Uh, did quite a bit of sets for that. Mary Kills People mm -hmm. uh, just did the, la the second season, uh, which is really good. It's on uh, Global right now. It's doing really well. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of fun to think, like, you know, People graduating out of this program, of course, we've got editing and we've got camera and a little bit of production planning and um, and the studio stuff. But um, prop and set is not really something that we necessarily focus on. So, like, um, how did you find, you know, how did you find getting into that aspect of the business after, you know, not necessarily having learned any of that skill set in school? Uh, well, basically, like when I came out of school, I kind of always had a creative side to me. Um, I always loved the way um, sets were put together, especially like my my biggest uh, 
inf inspiration was um, I don't know if you guys remember this. Maybe too, some of might be too young for this, <laughs> but um, back I think it was in the early '90s or late '80s. Yeah, most of these guys were born after that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a uh, Ninja Turtles uh, with the full costumes, with the animatronic heads, yeah. and everything. Like I saw that movie, and it was just great it made me feel nostalgic as like i want to learn how they did all of this how they set up the sets how they made those heads move how they i wanted to learn everything about it and that kind of boosted my uh interest into um the whole behind the scenes thing so i became um the guy that loved behind the scenes and from behind the scenes i realized that you know you create the atmosphere and the look when the camera's just on it and it's shooting it you're the person that helps to create that scene to be what it is. Like the editors do their job editing the uh, footage after and the, the, uh, the camera guys do their job shooting it really well. But you create the scene the, the way content. it looks, the content, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool, okay, and I guess uh, just to finally to close up, um, Mike sort of discussed uh, you know, having a good attitude on set. What, what in your mind is really that, that, that it factor uh, to lead to continuous work and success in, in the union structure? Uh, well, I would say in for the unions, and especially, you know, being on set, being positive is, is a great key tool to have. Um, also being as knowledgeable as possible and as helpful as possible is one of the greatest things that you can use on set because, you know, you're going to meet a lot of people that are not very friendly, they're not always nice to you, but you know what, at the end of the day, you can't let it always affect you, right? You, you gotta sometimes just roll with the punches and you know hope that that person ends up liking you. You know, at the end of the day, they may not like you. Um, you know, you might end up you know being that person that they just can't deal with. But you know, being positive, you know, being attentive on set, you know, realizing you know where your strong points are, where your weak points are, and working on them. Um, also, being on set helps you know figuring out what you really want to do you know especially if you're just coming on as a PA you know just hang around certain areas where if you like camera you know be around in the background where the camera's going on just so you can kind of hover and see what's going on try to stay out of the way of stuff but you know do as much as you can to be helpful um, there are points in time where people on set are very territorial so you know in some unions it's like you know you don't want to pick up a grip guy's stand when you're a PA, you know, that's maybe very taboo, you know, and departments don't like to crisscross and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You will get on sets where everybody's very helpful and one will help the other and, you know, they're not territorial like that. But, but um, feel it out a little bit. Yeah, you got to take the time and feel it out and, you know, just develop relationships. You know, relationships is, a, is, is very key, especially getting to know, um, you know, if you're, especially if you have a team lead or first AD, second AD, try to get to know them a little bit, mm. you know, because the thing is what makes it in this industry is who you know. Yeah. Um, you know, unfortunately, it's not exactly what you know. Mm. You know, you can know a million things. You can know a lot of professional things, a lot of um, theoretical things, but that may not carry you through your career. So the best thing to do is, you know, make contacts, network, you know, be courteous to people. Even if they're not courteous to you, you know, smile, shrug it off, you know, people look at those things and realize that, okay, this guy is a tough guy, you know, nothing really gets to him, you know, um, but, you know, try to do the best you can, basically. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming out. It's great to see you. Thank you. Uh, that's all we've got. Uh, Obi Nickel, O'Brien Nickel, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you.